Today I'm going to talk about a YubiKey 5. This is a hardware authenticator which is used for logging in and for two-factor authentication. Coming up next. The question that I will answer in this video is if this YubiKey gives me one, more convenience with logging in, and two, gives me more online safety. The answer will be, it depends on your use. It works nicely in many cases. It's very inconvenient in other cases. It will vary based on the kind of devices you have. I will get to that later. Today, two-factor authentication, meaning a second method of verifying your, your identity, is mostly done by text verification or by email verification. You're being forced to do 2FA, and that's the shortened version for two-factor authentication, by social media apps, Google accounts, Microsoft accounts. This is pretty much a common affair. Reverifying your identity via email or text. Sometimes this is also done using apps such as Google Authenticator or an app called Authy. I can talk about these software options another time because you can use them as well. Some apps and websites have more secure transaction requirements. In my case, I use Amazon Web Services and some financial websites. These websites require a 2FA verification every time I log in, which is really tedious. But that's not the only reason to use a hardware authenticator. I have a serious problem giving out my phone number to every app out there. The reason is that it is used as an identifier. I'm already angry at security apps like Telegram, WhatsApp, and Signal that use a phone number as an identifier. Your identities can be connected on social media to, to your real identity just by the phone number. So a 2FA using a UB key means you don't have to give your phone number out, in theory. The main reason for requiring 2FA is because you can be a target of a man-in-the-middle attack. Someone could have read your username and password or a short-term token that allows them to access your account. By re-verifying your identity through a channel that the hacker does, doesn't see, then an attack can be stopped. This is why the text and email are used. They're not part of the website traffic. Unfortunately, even these can be beaten, although it's more difficult. And of course, there's the inconvenience factor. So now, there's a hardware solution. YubiKey is the most popular of these hardware authenticators. And, and I have one, and I've been using it for about a month, and I'll give you my review of this device. As a bit of a background, Hardware authentication standards are constantly evolving, so there's a lot of issues with compatibility. Device models change, and it may be that you have to buy another model device in a year because that's how fast the standards are changing. This particular YubiKey cost me around $50. There are two specific uses for this YubiKey. One, it's used for 2FA, two-factor authentication. Two, it can also give you static passwords, and I will tell you how it can be useful for each. So the first use of this device is as a 2FA. There are several standards to think about. If you compare devices on Amazon, for example, you will see support for FIDO2, FIDO, OTP, which means one-time passwords, and there are different versions of that. Now, this is very important and one of the advantages of YubiKey. Pretty much all the standards are supported by the new YubiKey 5 version. This YubiKey 5 supports 2FA, for example, on a Mac OS. So, Mac OS X. You can use it as a two factor for logging into your computer. But it's not login free, it's just a second factor authentication. So even if somebody knows your password on the computer, they can't log in by itself with a password, they have to use the key. It can also be used with File Vault on Mac OS X for file encryption. Again, the encryption will be based on the data that's on 
the key. Now, Windows doesn't have support for this. Uh, they had support for an older version, and that version is no longer going to be uh, continued. So at the moment, Windows doesn't have any way of doing two-factor authentication on, on login using Windows Hello. But it can be used for Microsoft accounts, for Xbox, Office, login, anything Microsoft account-based. It doesn't require any login at all. In fact, all you have to do is press this and you can get into your Microsoft account. Now, as far as apps that support YubiKey, I'll give you some examples of some common apps and websites that uh, use YubiKey for two-factor authentication. Again, this is not login free. You still have to log in. This simply uh, prevents the need for sending you a text message or an email saying, please confirm your identity. And it works for Twitter. It works for Facebook. It works for Instagram. It works on Dropbox. And it doesn't work on Amazon Store, it wor but it works for Amazon Web Services. It works for anything Google, Google Accounts, YouTube, and so on. Now, let me talk specifically about using this for your password managers. And I tested this uh, with two password managers, specifically LastPass and KeePass. Now, as a second factor authentication, meaning it would require a master password and then this as a second way of verifying, uh, this will work with LastPass only if you have the premium account. So if you have the free account of LastPass, it's not going to work with two-factor authentication. But it will work with the master password, which I will talk about later. Second, you have KeePass. Now, KeePass does work with 2FA using a YubiKey. However, when you're talking about KeePass, there are really two products here. The main KeePass itself is for storing your passwords and you need various extensions to use in your browser. See, because of the separation of the products, it's actually pretty difficult to use this 2FA with various other plugins that you can use with KeePass. So KeePass is a little bit complex. However, just like LastPass, you can use this for the master password, and I will talk about that later. This is not part of 2FA. 2FA is a separate process. Now, there are many more sites supported, but this is a quick list. You can go to the website at UBCO, and you can see what, what other websites are supported. Now, the, UB, the UB key comes in several form factors. This is one form factor. It's called a Nano. This is a YubiKey 5 Nano. Uh, this one is made to be inserted in your computer and you can't really have anything sticking out with this. It's made to, to stay there fairly permanently or semi-permanently. Then you have the other option, which is an NFC-based one, which is a combination of plugging it into the USB and an NFC for use with a phone. Near field, that's what NFC means. And there's another version of that and this, which is a USB-C version. This one is USB-A. Now, this is where the greatest inconvenience lies. When you register a device for 2FA with an app or website, you basically register a specific YubiKey device, meaning one unit. So if you're going to use the YubiKey on your Windows computer that has a USB-A and it's semi-permanently plugged in there like the Nano here, it's not going to work with another computer that's only using USB-C, like a new MacBook. This is particularly significant issue for me since I use several computers. So it prevents me from switching computers. You can only register one YubiKey with each website. You cannot use a converter to move the YubiKey around to a USB-A or USB-C. You have to pick one form factor when you buy it in advance. And the one that I have is the USB-A version. If you want to use it with a phone, then you'll need the one with an NFC, like the one shown here. You have to unplug it from your computer to log in to your phone. I know this is technically difficult, but it would have been more convenient if you could sync two or three of these UB keys so you don't have to unplug, replug for short-term use.
Now, if you're in an office with other people and are that are in your area, this could also be tedious because if you go to the bathroom, in theory, you should unplug the device and take it with you. And sometimes you need it to use with a phone and you're not next to your computer, like when you're out to lunch. But there are other ways around to solve that. I always have a timeout lock screen on my computer. So you have to re-enter the password when it goes to screensaver mode. So there's no need for me to necessarily remove the device from the computer. But I'm forced to because there's only one key to use that I can use with my phone. By the way, an inaccuracy in some of the other reviews I've seen. Some people say you need multiple UB keys in case you lose one and you lose access to an app or website. Pretty much all the sites I've seen switch to phone or email verification if you don't have the YubiKey present. So if you lose it, unregister the old device and buy a new one, I don't see the need to necessarily purchase multiple YubiKeys in advance. Though I'm still concerned about leaving an option for text verification with my phone number on these devices as an alternate. Maybe you still need a burner phone or a special phone number in case you have to do two-factor authentication in those cases without using your normal phone number. For those wondering how the YubiKey actually works with your computer, when you tap on the metal portion of this device, what it really does is it acts like a keyboard driver, and when you tap on it, it actually types out a password that it then is received by the website. That's why it's quite compatible because it's very simple. It's just like typing in a keyboard manually. Because of the inconvenience of using the UB key on phone logins, I decided that for now, I will use it only for apps that I frequently need to use on a computer, and I don't need the convenience of 2FA for social media apps, for example. So mine is plugged in the, directly on the computer at all times unless I leave, then I can take it away with me. This limits my use of it since it can be used for multiple 2FAs only if I use it on the phone and the website simultaneously. I'm bothered by the form factor of the NFC version as well. It looks flimsy to me. If my computer hits something, I can imagine that portion that's sticking out, snagging, and breaking. That's why I hate dongles that stick out. This is one of the reasons I chose the Nano version, this one, since it can't get damaged in that manner. Maybe if YubiKey sends me the NFC version for review, I will re reconsider this. Now here comes the use that really helps me on my computer. This is the use of the device as a static password. This means I just tap into it to log on with a fixed password, depending on where I want to use this fixed password on. Now remember, a static fixed password is not connected to 2FA, but it does offer some productivity benefits. My primary use of it is for my password manager as the master password. I tried it both on LastPass and KeePass. When I'm prompted for my master password, I use the UB key as my master password. I tap on the UB key and it fills out a fixed password for me that's 32 digits long. You can use the same password in other places too, and that adds to the other convenience. It's no different than typing it in manually, but if you use it with a password manager, it simplifies remembering passwords and the use of the password manager. And you can still take this away with you, so then no one can know your password. Now, how do you make the YubiKey give out a static password versus a 2FA password? Well, it turns out you can program the YubiKey using something called a YubiKey personalization tool, which you download from the YubiCo site. Then the device has two modes. If you touch the device for a short period, like no longer than 1.5 seconds, it operates as mode one, 2FA, for example. If I hold it down longer for two seconds or longer, it switches to mode two, which in this case is my fixed password. So it's pretty convenient and that alone makes it worth it especially for using it with my password manager. And the personalization tool is not easy to use by any means, and it is complicated to understand, but once you figure it out, you can reset the auto-generated password as often as you want. You can set it with your own manually chosen password, though the interface is so bad and buggy that I haven't figured out how to do that. 
So I use the auto-generated password. So to summarize, the YubiKey has two practical uses. As a hardware 2FA device, which can add to your privacy instead of using a phone number. And it's also much safer than texting and email, both of which can still be hacked. Number two, it's very convenient as a hardware fixed password device, which is a time saver and allows for a single finger login on a computer. Now, I have a wish list to make this more usable. Number one, I wish I had the ability to sync multiple UB keys, both as a backup and for the convenience of mobile. Number two, perhaps they should provide us with a device that can switch to both USB-A and USB-C form factors to allow me to use it on multiple devices with one key or some sort of ad an adapter. I can understand why for security reasons, you may not want to, to give access to a common commercial USB-AC converter, but they could make one for us. Number three, it would really be great if the device can store more than one fixed password, then it could really create a shortcut for day-to-day -day use. Number four, another possibility is if websites supported multiple 2FA hardware devices or even using Google Authenticator as a backup, that would be great. Then we don't have to worry about losing these. Most don't. They only support one. It, I would really be happier if we moved away from requiring emails and phones as verification methods. As you will hear from my other videos, email is very unsafe. In summary, I think with the two uses I just gave, it's very usable for two purposes that I gave today. As time goes by, this could potentially go from occasional use to indispensable use in the future. It could be a big help to internet privacy since, since it can allow us to keep our phone number or even email private. I'll put a link out in the description for you if you want to check out the device on Amazon. As always, if you like my content, please subscribe to my channel and click on that notification bell. Okay.